If you have been here for any period of time, you know that the Great Commission drives everything we do here at Southeastern. Uh, one of our mottos around here is every classroom, a Great Commission classroom, every professor, Great Commission professor, and also our prayer is that every one of you will be Great Commission students and Great Commission graduates. Why do we emphasize the Great Commission? Well, the fact of the matter is the stakes are extremely high. They're in fact staggering. Uh, the Joshua Project reports that right now, and in fact, uh, you will see up on the uh, screen uh, behind me, what is called the World Missions Clock that is over in the Great Commission Center, but also now is available on our website. Uh, there are more than 7,000 unreached people groups today. Today, there's still more than 4.2 billion people who have no access to the gospel, which means they will be born, they will live, they will die, they will go to hell. And they never even one time heard the good news about King Jesus and his salvation. This is why here at Southeastern, you will be challenged again and again and again, Lord, not why should I go, but Lord, why should I stay? Keith Falconer was a wonderfully gifted individual and a missionary to Yemen where he would die from cerebral meningitis in his early 30s, be buried there. Keith Falconer said this, I have but one candle of life to burn, and I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with light. We believe that God does not call us to be comfortable Christians, but rather to live lives of sacrifice and service as we make much of King Jesus among the nations around the world. And we believe that Jesus has called us to make the Great Commission our priority. And our goal here is to equip you wherever you go, whatever you do, that you will indeed be a Great Commission Christian serving the church and serving our Lord. Next week, we will have what we call our gathering chapel. We do this every fall. And I want to urge you to do your best to be here for that particular service as we give very intentional focus to the Great Commission. Last year, coming out of that particular service, hundreds of students pledged their desire to go on a mission trip in the next academic year. And this last year, more than 100 students, actually 115 of you, went on mission trips somewhere in nine different trips that we put together here at Southeastern. Next week, we will share what our trips are for this coming year and where those locations are. And it is my prayer that you will make it your um, effort and your goal to be here. Uh, be prepared. God may change the course of your life next week, and that would not be a bad thing. That would be a good thing. My habit has been every fall in uh, almost now my 20 years here to begin the semester by taking a biblical text and expounding it. We believe very much in expository preaching and teaching. But I also wed the life of a wonderful missionary to that particular text that serves uh, for the most part as my application and my uh, illustrations all the way through. And so this morning, I want you to take your Bible and join me in the book of Proverbs chapter three, verses five through eight. And the title of my message this morning is A Life of Faithful Trust and Obedience, beautifully exemplified in Missionary Yvette Aaron's. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through verse 8, hear the word of God's inerrant word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Yvette Aarons is a marvelous trophy of God's amazing grace. And this particular passage she shared with me is one of her favorites that she has drawn strength from again and again and again throughout the years. Yvette was born deaf. She was also born black, and she was born into a world where she would never know her earthly father. 
And yet God would find his way to this little girl's life and she would experience the love and acceptance of the heavenly father through her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And she would become the first deaf missionary ever appointed by then the foreign mission board, now the international mission board of the Southern Baptist Convention. As you can imagine, her road was not easy, but the hand of divine providence accompanied her every step of the way and of her journey. In fact, she herself says, and I quote, you don't have to be smart, strong, or courageous, but you need to be obedient. That is all. And that is who Jesus and the world needs. This particular text, the wonderful Pastor Ray Ortland says, is an education in life at its best. God is speaking to us as his beloved ones, his adopted children. He chose us because he loves us, and now he is uh, coaching us in how we can be fully alive for his glory. And of course, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 are probably some of the most well-known verses in this entire book, a book given by a father to his son in terms of how to live a life of wisdom in our God. And I want you to learn this morning that I don't know anyone that has lived out these verses more faithfully and diligently than Abed Aaron's. And there are three truths in particular that I want to draw your attention to this morning from this particular passage of Scripture. Number one, we should trust the Lord fully. We should simply trust the Lord fully. Verses three, uh, 5 through 8, and especially verse 5, build on the commands and promises that we find in verses 1 through 4. There we are admonished to not forget the Lord's teachings, but to let our hearts keep His commandments. Verse 1, we're told if we do, our days will be extended and, and peace will be our companion. Verse 2, uh, we also should hold closely to the Lord's steadfast love, His hesed, and also His faithfulness, verse 3. And again, there's a promise, if we do, we will find favor and high regard with both God and people, verse 4. Now in verse 5, Solomon commands us to trust in Yahweh, trust in the Lord, and do so to your fullest. Indeed, he uses the phrase, with all your heart. Uh, Alan Ross, the wonderful Old Testament scholar, notes that the word trust, quote, carries the force of relying on someone for security. Here the confidence is to be in the Lord and not in any human understanding. Furthermore, the call is for a trust characterized by total commitment with all your heart. Now, as often the case in uh, poetic kinds of literature, there is a positive idea that is complemented or paralleled with a negative idea. And this is what we find here in verse 5 where Solomon says, And do not lean on your own understanding. In other words, divine guidance and wisdom should always trump uh, human counsel and thinking. I love the way, again, the Old Testament scholar Bruce Walkie puts it. He says, do not lean on the broken crutch of your own understanding and the thimble of your own knowledge. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Uh, in comparison to God, goodness gracious, our understanding is a broken crutch. And our knowledge is indeed perhaps not even the, the thimble is accurate to describe the contrast between the wisdom and the knowledge of our great God and our own. Uh, Eugene Peterson's uh, The Message has this colorful paraphrase of verse 5. Trust God from the bottom of your heart don't try to figure out everything on your own. Yvette Aaron's life is a wonderful testimony to a life that has indeed been lived in the trusting obedience of this verse. Let me just tell you a little bit about her this morning. Yvette was born in Jamaica on May the 31st, 1959. Both of her parents were hearing, and they were not Christians. And sadly, Yvette never knew her earthly father. Uh, she is also the oldest of three girls, and she also has a brother, but he died at the tender age of three months. Uh, she was born deaf, and she says that she did not understand very much as a child. However, 
at a neighborhood Sunday school class, and beginning at an early age, she would go to that church, and she notes in her story that she was particularly drilled in memorizing a particular verse, John chapter 3 and verse 16. By the way, she continues to uh, pursue Scripture memorization with the same passion that she had as a young lady. Her missionary friend, Vesta Souter, says she has always been avid at memorizing the Word of God. Yvette shares that though she was informed and acquainted with John 3.16 at an early age, she did not get everything at that time. But... God was working in her heart, and God would do something marvelous in the life of this lady. Uh, the church that she was attending had a bus ministry, and it would come by and pick Yvette up and take her to church uh, every Sunday. And as a 12-year-old girl, she said the large church would teach her the Bible, again, emphasizing Scripture memorization and out, uh, actually giving out Christmas cards as gifts for those that had been proficient in memorizing God's Word. Then at the age of 15, Yvette shares that she began to attend uh, big church, and she would be there for the corporate worship of the body of believers. And she notes she was spe specifically uh, moved by watching their pastor kneel and pray every single time they gathered for worship. And God began to do a work in her heart at that particular time. In fact, she shares that after church one Sunday, she went forward and told the pastor she wanted Jesus. She notes that she did not understand everything, but she did know that she was putting her trust in the Lord. Yvette was 16 when she was converted, and it was when she began to follow Jesus with her whole heart. She was baptized in the baptistry in a church nearby, along with other deaf believers, since the deaf missionary church didn't have their own baptistry. And she notes that she would continue to grow in the Lord. And this is when the Lord began to plant in her life the dream that even though she was deaf, and even though she was black, and even though she would be single for all of her life, she still had it in her heart to be a missionary. In fact, this dream of being a missionary would grow and be grounded both in the clear teachings of God's Word and also the conviction of what God placed in her heart. In fact, the gospel so gripped her, she felt like she had to share it with others, and particularly those who, like her, could not hear. She wrote a book entitled Signs from the Sermon, the Sermon on the Mount for Deaf Readers. And this is what she writes in that book. Every person is a sinner. Jesus Christ alone is sinless. The most amazing thing is sinless Jesus becoming a sinner on the cross, carrying our sins. This is no joyful occasion, no day of celebration, really. It's the most horrible historical event, more so than even the Holocaust. Why is that so? For a time, our sins separated Jesus from the holy, loving Father. Any true believer realizes the horror of sin. The believer shall mourn about his or her sins, but wait, the prescription is repent. Just as a person previously turned from God in disobedience, so now one can turn to God by humble rejection of self and old habits of living for a new lifestyle. Forgiveness, and this comes right out of Proverbs 3, 8, forgiveness is medicine for a contrite heart. True peace is contentment. And this is a reality that every person, sin or Christian, face the consequences of his or her sins. Wow. This wonderful life is the Christian repenting of his or her sins and grieving about the evil on earth. Then he or she receives the Lord's forgiveness and peace within self. Yvette shared with me in an interview how grateful she is for hearing churches, but she also honestly pointed out to me that they often struggle in relating well with the death. And yet she says, I'm not angry about that or bitter about it because, after all, I was saved in a hearing church. 
Still, we must be honest this morning, and I want us to think about this very carefully. I acknowledge first and foremost my own sin and shortcoming in this area until recent days. Most of us are probably not as sensitive and understanding with the deaf as we could be. And if we're not careful, we can actually come across to our brothers and sisters in that particular community as being uh, superior, uh, even having something of a condescending attitude. Uh, to our deaf friends, a vet's friend and fellow missionary among the deaf, Vesta Souter has said, along with her husband, that we need to understand that deaf people have their own particular global affinity for each other. And she also shared with me that signing is physically and emotionally draining. It is not for the, the weak of heart. And even uh, with signing, sometimes things are lost in the process. And yet, a vet story, though an unfortunate and sad commentary on this reality, is still an amazing story of God's faithfulness and God's grace. A vet answered the call to be a missionary. And so she did what any Southern Baptist would do. She inquired then of the Foreign Mission Board about becoming a missionary, and immediately she was given a long list of prerequisites. I don't disagree with that at all. And she began to note what was on that list and recognize that she needed both seminary and she would also need two years of work experience to qualify as a missionary. So she immediately began to follow their instructions. Uh, admitted to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. She uh, requested that they might provide for her sign language interpreters, but the seminary uh, 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 informed her, sorry, uh, we can't afford to provide signers for you. But thankfully, in God's kind providence, one uh, male student who knew some signs uh, would sign for her what he could, and other students volunteered to take notes for her in the various classes. Then again, in God's amazing providence, two years later, or the following year, two new students who were skilled at interpreting volunteered their hours to interpret all of her classes for her until she would graduate with her master's degree. Now listen to what happens next. After graduating from seminary, Yvette applied to the IMB only to be turned down because she was deaf, and they said she had a handicap that would prevent her from going. But I thank God that that particular policy was changed in 1987, and Yvette was appointed with a special assignment because of her deafness and headed to Trinidad as a missionary. Again, her friend Vesta Souter notes, she never complained. She simply trusted the Lord, kept working, and kept hoping. Well, today, Yvette is a graduate of Lexington School for the Deaf. She holds a BA degree in English and Visual Arts and a Master of Education in Deaf Education and an MRE in Religious Education from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. In her own words, the Father has always been faithful. I am a deaf black woman. That is my life. This is how my Father made me and sees me. And he sees us like he sees his beloved son. In the Bible, God says of Jesus, you are my beloved son, and with you I am well pleased. It is a blessing and encouragement to know the Father looks at me and says, you are my beloved daughter. I am also well pleased with you. And yes, a God like this can absolutely be trusted to the fullest measure. Number two, not only do we trust the Lord fully, we need to know the Lord intimately. Verse 6 informs us, In all of your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Brothers and sisters, being wise in our own eyes, as Jonathan Aiken says, is the root of foolishness going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You see, wisdom says, trust the Lord, verse 5. And wisdom says, know the Lord, verse 6. In fact, the NIV translates verse 6 as submit to the Lord. The ESV, as I just read, says acknowledge the Lord. But I really like the idea of know the Lord. Know the Lord and know Him in an intimate, personal, close kind of relationship. 
Again, Alan Ross says it is this knowledge of the Lord that leads to absolute obedience and absolute surrender in every realm of our lives. Furthermore, such knowledge again is rewarded because the Bible says that when we know the Lord and trust the Lord, he will make our paths straight. In other words, contrary to the crooked and destructive paths of the foolish and the wicked, God will make our paths straight. He will make our paths righteous and our heavenly father will be pleased as we walk closely and intimately with him every day and every step of the way. Such intimate devotion, I believe, is beautifully characterized by missionary Abed Aaron's and was rewarded in spite of many obstacles, hindrances, and difficulties that she faced in her life. In fact, Yvette became interested in missions, as I noted earlier, shortly after her conversion. How did this happen? Well, she was watching missionaries work in Jamaica, and it moved her to want to follow in their footsteps. She said, I quote, I wanted to be like them and tell others about Jesus. That is how God called me. And so Yvette went to deaf school and sought out a deaf church, and she said, by God's kindness, there was one. And those American missionaries, though they signed differently when they taught and preached, again, Yvette said she was very grateful for their kindness. I, I did not know this. I had the uh, very foolish assumption that sign language was universal. Uh, that is not the case at all. There are more than 300 different sign languages in the world today. And again, just like there are unreached people groups that do not have the Bible in their language, there are unreached people groups among the deaf that do not have a sign language that will be adequate for Bible study in their language as well. But as Yvette said, these missionaries came to live and teach us uh, about Jesus living among us, and my life was moved and inspired. I wanted to be like them. In 1975, at the age of 15, Yvette and her family moved to America to live in New York, and she would later become a naturalized citizen. She would join the Long Island Church of the Deaf, which happened to be a Southern Baptist church. She would go on to obtain the various degrees that I mentioned to you a moment ago, and then she would apply for missionary service in 1985, but as I said, she was turned down because they said she was, quote, handicapped, close quote. Needless to say, our sister in Christ was shocked. She was confused uh, by her own witness. She says it was a very dark time in her life. And at that time, now think about this, only back in 1985, that's not that long ago, there were no deaf teams and there were no deaf strategies at the IMB. But I believe God raised up Yvette Aarons not only to be a missionary among the deaf, but also to help educate and mobilize the IMB to become more sensitive to what is one of the largest unreached people groups in the world today. She waited on the Lord. She trusted in the Lord. And in 1987, the IMB, the FMB then, eliminated deafness as a handicap that prevented the deaf from serving as missionaries. With much prayer, yes, that is worth congratulating and saying thank you to the Lord. With much prayer and the advocacy of many friends of the deaf within the Southern Baptist Convention, she was appointed with a special assignment first to Trinidad. The date was December the 30th, 1989. She was again the first deaf missionary ever to be appointed in the history of our International Mission Board. In 1993, she received a career appointment as a church associate developer for the deaf in Trinidad. In, 19, in 2008, the IMB formed the Deaf Affinity Group. In fact, there are nine of them, and the ninth is the Deaf Affinity. It is a specific people group now to be reached with the gospel. And just a little facts here for you. According to the World Federation of the Deaf, there are more than 70 million deaf persons in the world. Many believe, and I do, that the number is much higher. Most of them are unreached with little or no access to the gospel. 
And as I said a moment ago, altogether there are more than 300 different sign languages in the world among the deaf today. There is a universal sign language used informally and at international meetings, but it has significant limitations and is not adequate for what needs to be done in terms of the gospel and teaching people the Bible. Research also reveals that in the U.S. alone, there are only 58 deaf churches in the SBC for at least 3 million people, and 40% of those churches today are without a pastor. There are 100 major cities without a single deaf church. And brothers and sisters, 1,500 deaf people die daily without Jesus. Again, most of them are unreached, even in America, and of course, globally, the situation is even worse. Considering these sobering facts that most do not know Jesus, have never had the gospel signed to them, I just have to believe that not only did that reality compel Yvette Aarons to go, I would ask many of you today, could this be God's mission field for you? Could this be God's calling upon your life? They are everywhere. They need to be loved, they need to be cared for, they need to be treated as equals to the hearing, and they need to hear the good news about Jesus. Are you willing to be one of those that would take the gospel to them? At the time of her initial appointment to Trinidad in 1990, a vet said, and I quote, often I ask God, what is so special about me? Why me? I am just simply delighted to reach other people of like language and experience. The deaf world is a small world, and I already feel a bond with the deaf people of Trinidad. And putting this in perspective, Yvette told me, quote, it's again all about obedience. We simply obey Jesus. Turn things over to the Lord. Be submissive. Get trained, discipled. Be willing to do what he wants. There are many different mission fields be willing to go and be willing to work. And yes, we need to trust the Lord fully. We need to know the Lord intimately. And number three, we need to fear the Lord completely. In our fallen state, let's be honest, we all struggle with both pride and self-sufficiency. In other words, we think we're sufficient for any and every task, and sometimes even as followers of Jesus, we will push him to the side and try to do things in our own strength and our own power, and nothing could be more foolish. That's why Lady Wisdom admonishes us in verse 7, be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And what will be the result? It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. I love the way that the scripture puts the positive and the negative together there for our understanding and our edification. Yvette Aarons arrived in Trinidad in March of 1990, the first deaf person ever sent by the IMB as a missionary. Through the 1990s, she would serve in Trinidad, then in St. Lucia. And she says, I immediately jumped in and just simply started serving. Now, she acknowledges it was a new experience, and it really required of her to trust in the Lord and to believe that he would be faithful. <clears throat> she very honestly acknowledges the work was not easy. It was often difficult and, and challenging, and yet God brought some wonderful brothers and sisters alongside of her to encourage her along the way. In fact, again, I love how open and transparent she is after one counseling session, I just sobbed in the bathroom. The next time I just opened my heart, no reason to hide, God used that to minister to me. I learned to share and be vulnerable. God gave me the grace of perseverance. Thus, in 2002, the Lord opened the door for a vet to go to Thailand. She would work with the deaf throughout Southeast Asia, but especially in the city of Bangkok. And as her, she moved from people group to people group, she said her philosophy was simply this, I worked hard to learn about the different cultures. We must adapt while sharing Christ. We must take on their culture and language without their religion in order to bring Christ into their world. Just like Paul, following Jesus, I determined I would go to places where people don't know him, I would wear their clothes, I would eat their food, I would stay in their homes, I would live as they do and bring the good 
news. Now again, when she went to Thailand, she admits it was hard. It was difficult. I did go through culture shock. I had to learn a, a new sign language. Furthermore, initially, she was pretty much alone with no local deaf friends who understood what was happening in her life. She admits that it was a great time of spiritual and physical struggle, and she had much discouragement, but at the same time, she discovered this God that we can trust fully and we need to know intimately and fear completely. This God could be trusted, and he sustained her. One of the blessings of the International Mission Board is what is called member care, where members come along that are specially trained in counseling. In fact, many of our counseling students, my prayer is that you will go to the nations and serve in this very vital and important area with our International Mission Board. Uh, she acknowledges that because of the changing culture, she had culture shock, she had panic attacks. But a particular couple named David and Claudia Johnson, who had become and are dear friends of hers, came alongside of her to love her and encourage her. She also says that a particular book, In My Father's House by Mary Cassian, was something she read through and worked through daily, and God used that to bless her and to get her through that tough time. A vet would serve in Thailand for 13 years. And God continually kept his word of Proverbs 3, 8, giving her nourishment and refreshment in her ministry. She would minister to all ages among the deaf, sharing in particular the stories of the Bible. She's learned, and so have many others in this area, that the deaf are especially uh, sensitive to and are open to the stories of the Bible. They're just naturally drawn to them. In fact, Yvette says storytelling is just a natural component of the deaf culture, and it's one of the best ways to share the Bible and the gospel. In fact, she says, I love this method of sharing the Bible and the gospel, this method of teaching my people. Now, there's one particular story that I would be remiss if I did not share with you uh, this morning. Uh, Yvette shared with thee that while she was ministering in Thailand, there was a precious 19-year-old who began to come to their church. She came out of a Buddhist background. They would talk initially about girl things, but they would also eventually move to the Bible and the gospel. For one month, she came diligently to the deaf Thai congregation that met in Yvette's living room floor. By the fourth Sunday, God had worked in her heart, and this young girl decided that it was time for her to follow Jesus. Yvette shared that the beautiful thing about her decision was the other Thai believers just rejoiced around her and began to pour their lives into her as well. One believer prayed for her, another baptized her, and Yvette continued to disciple her for several months. And then she says, one day this um, new believer came with her eyes just shining. And Yvette thought, I bet it is a boy. Well, Yvette says, it was. Well, Yvette says, and I quote, I corralled them to tell them Bible stories and give them instructions about marriage. I was not about to leave that to chance if they were going to get serious with one another. Well, they did. They married in Yvette's home. And eventually, they would not only build a Christian home, but they would be involved in the translation of the Bible. Yvette Aaron served with the IMB from 1989 to 2016, 27 years. And she continues to serve the Lord from her home in Brooklyn, New York today. Summarizing her service to the Lord in the IMB, uh, it is said of her by folks at the IMB, and I quote, Yvette retired in January 2016. But her tireless efforts along her, allowed her to cross many bridges in Jesus' name. As a result of Yvette's willingness to obey the call of God on her life, many deaf people from all tribes, peoples, and languages will one day join in worship before the throne. So let me conclude. Today, early in the 21st century, it is said that there are at least 70 plus million deaf persons in 234 countries, most of whom remain unreached. Again, I'm convinced the number is much higher. 
They have little or no access to the gospel that saves, but thankfully, by God's grace, more are hearing the Savior's call to go to the massive people group of the deaf who need Jesus. Now, I've got to change something that's in the slide that you see over my head. Today, the IMB has 50 persons assigned to the deaf affinity people group. Well, I learned last night that by the end of this year, that number of 50 will drop to 14. 14 serving among a people group of 70 million. It is, again, without question, one of the largest people groups in the world. And yes, they could use 300 working among that people group right now, today. Thankfully, we're at least aware of this people group and we're aware that they need to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Yvette Ahrens was a trailblazer in this area. She made it possible for others to follow in her footsteps. Vesta Souter says, and I quote, Yvette helped revolutionize many strategies and approaches of the IMB. Sadly, we were not deaf friendly back then, and we are still learning. Yvette, though, was willing to be the first one up, and she put up with our ignorance. She was pivotal in training others and is still helping to get deaf translations into the heart languages of others. She has been a massive influence in deaf missions, and I love this so much. Yvette is the deaf's Lottie Moon and Bertha Smith. She is serious about the things of God. In fact, she can be direct because of these things. But her perspective is all of this has been and is simple. Being deaf is a great asset. The bridge is already built because of my deafness. I will just need to cross it and reach the deaf for Jesus. We must then go because the lost are everywhere in all kinds of cultures. And we go because we have what they don't have, Jesus. Even for me, there are no limits. Jesus loves me. He's always with me, totally undeserved, like all of us. Simply take the step, and he will take care of you. Now, I have a very special surprise for you all today because this is probably right at the 20th missionary message that I have ever brought to Southeastern Seminary. Uh, all of the others are now with the Lord. But Yvette Aarons is not. And she is here with us today. And I would ask if she would to stand that our folks might be able to see her. I think Yvette knows that she is loved by this seminary family. Yes. And we are greatly honored to have her here. Thank her for being so courageous and setting the pace for the ministry to the deaf. My prayer for us is that hundreds will come from this school follow in her footsteps and be missionaries to the deaf community telling them about Jesus. We just ask that she would pray for us and that God would do that. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. I used to I'm going to stand beside you so they can hear. <laughs> I used to be right there where you're at, sitting there, coming into a chapel. I went to chapel at my seminary. And so I know what this feels like. I was 25, and then now I'm 64. And as I look back, I think about the chapter that you referred to, the, the wisdom proverb. It was essential for me when I was young. 
And now at 64, when I look back on who I am, I just, wow, God. <laughs> <laughs> and I look back at me and then see his word and I think, whoa, I know me. And I hope you'll know who you are in him. Father God, you are our champion. Amen. You treasure each and every one of us. Your plan is set forth. You have a plan for each and every one of us, a plan that brings us into obedience. We have needs. We need you to walk alongside. We need to walk alongside you to live in wisdom, to value that which is important and disregard that which is not, mm. and to live forward in your grace. I know here some students have real needs like financial needs and spiritual needs, and I pray that you would meet those needs. And Father, if we stand before you and we know we're to forgive others as you have forgiven us, and we're to stand in the cross of Jesus, and to know that it's about forgiveness, and that we would be people not just, uh, oh, I'm sorry about this, I'm sorry about this, but we would truly dwell on forgiveness. We are forgiven and we forgive others. Mm. So Father, maybe there are people against us. Maybe we know they're against us. We can get on text, we can Zoom, and we can forgive others or say we're sorry. and not be in an attitude of uh, uh, where you're not in unity and you, you walk away from something because you don't want to confront it, but that, Father, you would empower each of these students, you know, not to uh, be aligned with untruth and gossip and, and to be influenced, but to be thanking you for all things. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you would find that special. <laughs> the hour's late. Let me close us in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the wisdom of your word, and thank you for your choice servant, Yvette Ahrens. Lord, what an example she is for us to trust you fully and to know you intimately and fear you because you are a faithful, gracious, wonderful God. And Lord, the nations are crying and we have the message that can provide healing to their hearts and souls. Lord, the deaf group is large. They need missionaries. May you raise up some from this school to give their lives to that noble calling for your great glory. We ask this and we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of his people said, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.